When the Philadelphia Fusion took on the Paris Eternal in Week 5 of the Overwatch League, we were given one of the most suspenseful sets of the 2020 season. This series had everything a fan could ask for. A classic tracer duel between Soon and Carpe, a near reverse sweep that included 70 seconds of overtime on Oasis Garden, and loads of action as XZ and the Eternal fought tooth and nail to clutch out the win at the end of the day. While there were many great plays in the series, we're going to take a look at one standout moment in particular. When the Paris Eternal set a new record for the fastest round of Junkertown attack in Overwatch League history. Before we get into the analysis, we want to note that this is the first time that hero pools were put into effect in the Overwatch League. This week, McCree, Widowmaker, Reinhardt, and Moira were taken out of the rotation. With Widowmaker unavailable, a hero that has been favored by both teams when it comes to Junkertown, both the Fusion and the Eternal seem to have fallen back on comfort picks. The round starts with the Eternal on attack, and they come out with an interesting combination of heroes. Soon is using his Tracer, and Exe is playing his signature Hanzo alongside Orisa, Diva, Zenyatta, and Brigitte. Even with a much less mobile composition compared to the Fusion's dive-heavy team, the Eternal managed to escort the payload with relative ease. Rounding the first corner, Philadelphia commits to diving onto Exe with Carpe and Sato, but a swift hop off the building into a wall climb is followed up by a beautiful 180-degree jumping headshot on Tracer and a volley of storm arrows on Winston. Seconds after Carpe went down, Paris cleans up the rest of Philadelphia and reaches the first checkpoint without opposition. Heading into the streets phase, Philadelphia switches to a bunker comp, switching to Baptiste and Sigma, and Ivy switching off Soldier in favor of May to play around the tight corners. In theory, the Fusion should be able to mount a solid defense, but less than 30 seconds in, Soon manages to flank to the back line and gets a double dash pulse bomb stick onto Alarm Zenyatta, throwing a wrench into the Fusion's stall tactics. With one support out of the way, the Fusion are forced to fall back behind their shields and regroup, while the payload makes it two thirds of the way to point B. As the payload rounds the corner for the final portion of the streets phase, the Eternal match the Fusion on the high ground and launch a continuous stream of fire towards them. Amidst the pressure being applied by Paris, Exe and Hype manage to get picks on Funny Astro and Alarm, resulting in an easy point B capture. I'm just getting rolled! Before the commitment even comes in from Soon, we talked about him setting up this flank, but in fact it's Xe and Hip finding the pickoffs. That's a free fight and Soon, I mean, you can't even question this. They're absolutely dominating the game so far. Now, with 5 minutes and 30 seconds in the bank and all the momentum in the world, the Eternal keep their foot on the gas. Even with a failed flank attempt ending with Soon dying, Paris continues to push forward. Closing in on the third point with the payload at a choke, a fight breaks out, with both teams skirmishing on the rotating pillar. Shields and matrixes are set up on both sides, but the Eternals see a crack in Philadelphia's bunker. Paris spots Alarm healing and exchanging fire from a room across the corridor. Exe steps forward and releases his Dragon Strike right at Zenyatta. This both forces Poco's D.Va to get out of harm's way, while also creating an opening onto Alarm, who is now without a front line. Thanks to his teammate creating this window of opportunity, Hip fires his orbs and takes out Alarm turning the fight into a 5v6. Hip, able to take down Alarm. This time it's Alarm on the receiving end. Had the Eternal hesitated even a few seconds, the Fusion would have been able to reposition and continue their defense against Paris' Siege. With their tactical position compromised, the Fusion hop off and regroup onto point C to make one last stand. But with two ultimates against the Eternal's five, Paris pulls the trigger and go in for the dive. Soon once again lands a huge pulse bomb onto Sato, and while it doesn't result in a kill, it chunks the enemy tank and forces the fusion into a corner, allowing the Eternal to cruise the payload onto the point with an unbelievable 4 minutes and 10 seconds left on the clock. Remember, this was the Eternal who were seen as an underdog after losing to the Outlaws just one day prior. Not only did the Eternal manage to break the Junkertown record with a 3 minute and 47 second attack time, a new record! They did so against a team that had a flawless record up until this game. By taking advantage of Exe's mastery of Hanzo and Soon's ever-reliable Tracer, the Eternal forced the Fusion to play reactively for the entire map. Making pick after pick at all stages, the Fusion frequently found themselves in 5v6 situations before being collapsed upon shortly after, never able to execute their game plan to hold off Paris with their defensive comp. What's impressive about this series 
was not only the mechanical abilities of the Eternals hero specialist, but more so their resilience to setbacks and ability to recollect and bounce back from a poor showing the day prior. This kind of mental fortitude allowed them to take out one of the top dogs in the 2020 Overwatch League season in a dominating fashion. What a stunner here in Washington DC! Will the Philadelphia Fusion still be a top pick for the rest of the season? Let us know in the comments below. And tune in next week for our analysis of the tense Oasis overtime battle from the end of this series.